Hi, this is Dr. Kingston, and in this video, I'll be talking about the maxillary nerve within the pterygopalatine fossa and beyond. The objectives for this video are to identify the major branches of the maxillary nerve and then discuss their modalities and the structures that they innervate. The first objective is the easiest to complete. The maxillary nerve is made up completely of somatic sensory fibers. It's the second division of the trigeminal nerves, this big guy here, which is going to provide somatic sensory innervation for the entire face. Its specific territory is shown in blue here. So it's carrying information from the mid face, from the upper lip and lower eyelid, and from this little projection here up into the anterior temple. Now, just like we've seen with other divisions of the trigeminal, the maxillary nerve is going to have some parasympathetic hitchhikers. These parasympathetic pathways are going to originate with the facial nerve here, but their postganglionic neurons will travel alongside maxillary branches to supply parasympathetic motor to the lacrimal gland and the mucous glands of the nasal cavity and palate. The maxillary nerve exits the cranium through foramen rotundum, which will lead it directly into the pterygopalatine fossa, into the pterygopalatine ganglion. From there, it starts branching. And we're going to see two major groups of branches. We have branches that come directly from the main trunk of the maxillary nerve and branches that are going to originate from the pterygopalatine ganglion. The general rule here is that branches coming from the main trunk um, are headed to the external face and teeth, and branches coming from the ganglion are heading to the nasal cavity and to the palate. We're going to start off with the main trunk branches. The first that I'm going to talk about is the zygomatic nerve, which is carrying sensory from the skin of the lateral cheek and anterior temple. It is also going to route those hitchhiking parasympathetics up to the lacrimal gland. It has two terminal branches, the zygomaticofacial and zygomaticotemporal nerves, which are unfortunately not visible in this image. And if I'm being honest, I wasn't able to find any open source image, um, but that's okay. We'll continue on. Know that these branches are there and they are supplying the lateral cheek and anterior temple. Also from the main trunk, we find the posterior superior alveolar nerves. Now, unlike the mandibular teeth, which were all innervated by that inferior alveolar nerve, the maxillary teeth are innervated by three separate nerves. So the posterior superior alveolar nerve leaves the main stem of the maxillary nerve. They are going to enter into the maxilla and travel into the alveolar process here. And in that process, they participate in what's called the superior dental plexus. And from that plexus, you will get little fibers going out to individual teeth. Fibers that come out of the superior dental plexus that from these posterior superior alveolar nerves are going to go to the three maxillary molars. Okay. The bulk of the main trunk of that maxillary nerve then is going to continue on into the orbit as the infraorbital nerve. It travels through the inferior orbital fissure into the floor of the orbit and then back out onto the face. On the face, it gives off some tiny little nasal, palpebral, and labial branches that provide sensory innervation from the skin. Prior to emerging onto the face, though, it gives off two additional branches, and these are going to the remaining maxillary teeth. So we have the middle superior alveolar nerve that will innervate the premolars and the anterior superior alveolar nerve, which will innervate the canines and the incisors. These are both going to go into, in through the maxilla into the alveolar process, and they also participate in that superior dental plexus. Now, these are very tiny nerves and they run through the maxilla bone, but we can still make out their outlines here when we shine a light through the maxillary sinus. These are both going to travel down through the maxilla to that superior dental plexus, and then they get divvied up to go to individual teeth. 
The anterior superior ends up innervating the maxillary incisors and canines. The middle superior goes to the premolars and overlaps with that posterior superior to innervate the first molar. The rest of the nerves that we'll talk about here are going to be branches from the pterygopalatine ganglion. So these are still considered to be branches of the maxillary nerve. They just originate as the maxillary nerve has joined up with that pterygopalatine ganglion. All right, the nasopalatine nerve is the first one of these, and it's one of those wonderfully named nerves that tells you exactly where it's going. So it's going to the nasal cavity and to the palate. To get into the nasal cavity, the nasopalatine nerve is going to pass through the sphenopalatine foramen on the medial wall of the pterygopalatine fossa. From there, it's going to jump over to the nasal septum and it's going to travel anteriorly and inferiorly toward the floor of the cavity. Now, once it reaches the floor here, it does something kind of interesting. It is going to tunnel through the hard palate to reach the oral surface. And there it is going to su uh, supply the mucosa of the anterior palate, including the gingiva. Its territory can be sort of variable. And there is certainly some overlap with the territory of the greater palatine nerve that's posterior to it, but it typically extends back to about the canines. Also passing through that sphenopalatine foramen, we have the posterior nasal nerves, and there's a superior and inferior of each. So as these superior posterior nasal nerve and inferior posterior nasal nerves come through the sphenopalatine foramen, they are each going to split into two branches. One branch is going to go medially over to the septum, and one is going to go laterally to the lateral wall of the nasal cavity, which is what you're seeing in this image here. The superior and inferior nerves split up innervation of the nasal mucosa between them. The inferior innervates the inferior septum and lateral walls, and the superior innervates the superior septum and lateral walls. And that's going to include, for the superior, the superior middle uh, nasal conchae and ethmoid sinus. So that sphenopalatine foramen took us into the nasal cavity, and now we are going to travel inferiorly to the oral cavity. The greater and lesser palatine nerves travel through the greater palatine canal from the pterygopalatine fossa. And from there, they are going to pass through the greater and lesser palatine foramen, foramina, sorry, there are two of them, to get to the palate. <clears throat> the greater palatine nerve is going to travel through the greater palatine foramen and then anteriorly on the hard palate to innervate the mucosa up to about the first premolar. And the lesser palatine nerve will travel through the lesser palatine foramen and supply the mucosa of the soft palate. And finally, the pharyngeal nerve is a tiny little branch that supplies the mucosa of the nasopharynx just posterior to the pharyngotympanic tube. It is also going to travel inferiorly from that pterygopalatine ganglion through the greater palatine canal but it is going to head even further posteriorly than the lesser palatine nerve to help reach that region of the nasopharynx. And now it is time for a practice question. All right, the correct answer here, or the best answer, I should say, is that middle superior alveolar. And I say best answer because there is generally some overlap in the territory of these nerves, as you will find out in practice. Um, but the best answer here is the middle superior alveolar nerve. And we can see right here the, let me pull up my laser pointer, uh, the premolars here are right in the middle uh, the dental arcade. So it can be tricky to remember which nerve innervates them. Um, I find it easiest to group the teeth by their morphology. So anterior blade shaped teeth are anterior superior alveolar. Premolars are going to be middle and molars will be posterior. You'll just need to remember that that tricky first molar gets fibers from both the middle and posterior branches. 
And that is the end. Thank you guys for watching.